Are you curious about bodies, pleasure, and possibilities? And what about curious about what others are up to on the planet when it comes to pleasure, sex, and play? Have you considered what pleasure can do for your life, your body, and your bank account? Do you know something magical, delightful, and out of this world orgasmic is not only possible for you, but totally available to you? If you're ready to be the magical, sexual, sexy beast you know you can be, and you just need the tools to get there, you're in the right place. Now, here's the host of The Pleasure Zone, sensual movement artist, relationship and sex alchemist, Milica Yelenich. Welcome back, my sweet pleasure seekers. So today we're going to talk about visual stimulation for greater pleasure. This topic actually came up because I had somebody write to me this week. Um, they were saying that one of the things that they love is being not just a voyeur, but they love visual stimulation. And I thought, that's a really cool topic. So thank you for that topic. And one of the things that was mentioned was the visual stimulation of looking at bodies in different positions. And I thought, okay, this can just go in so many directions. So I think this will be a very fun exploration tonight regarding visual stimulation. Uh, ironically, the same thing this week was I'm taking some courses. And one of the things I was learning about is the, um, the way that our bodies receive light stimulation and how 80% of light that's absorbed in our bodies is absorbed through our eyes, which sounds naturally logical because we see with our eyes, but we have like all this skin and we have all these other things like the external parts of our body. And I thought, well, that's fascinating if only like 20% of other light is absorbed in the rest of our body by the rest of our body. So I did a little studies on that. I little, did a little curiosity thinking on some other things. And I'm going to throw it all together for you guys tonight as we do this exploration into visual stimulation. We can be visually stimulated in several ways. And I think that's kind of a fun thing to talk about too. You know, whether you're being stimulated for pleasure or being stimulated in ways that actually traumatize. Knowing me, I'm going to tap into both of those tonight. So I hope they, I hope all of this gives you insight gives you some information and, you know, maybe even gets you some new ideas to be able to play with. For those of you who are new to this show, I invite you to keep an open mind, be willing to explore, and by all means, come into the chat room and have a chat with me on Inspired Choices Network. You can just come on over to Inspired Choices Network and jump in the chat room if you have questions. So that's, those are some options. You can always send me messages uh, after the show as well. You can find me on social media and you can message me like, hey, I have a question about that show. If you actually tell me where you're, what you're referencing, the show and the question, I am happy to, uh, to contribute to you and answer some questions for you. So I think it's fun too that we're talking about visual stimulation because in the last few months, my body has loved glasses. It's the funniest thing, and my body requires wearing glasses for reading now, where the rest of my life, I have not required them. And I actually find myself rather cute in glasses, so that could be part of it. And so you never know. You never know what it is your body's going to offer you uh, in terms of creating greater pleasure and greater cuteness. Uh, so maybe it's glasses. Maybe your eyes would like a little something. It's like my eye jewelry, I'm liking it. So, so uh, yeah, what was I saying? I was starting to talk about a little bit about what I do. So I mentioned to you guys that I was taking a class this week. And one of the things that I, I learn um, about is, is different types of healing modalities, which I absolutely love to do, and different ways that we can have pleasure. And one of the things to me about pleasure is that we first have to deal with the traumas that have occurred and the conflicts that have occurred in our body. So I look at and have studied and examined like different works, different kinds of works from all different walks of um, life and uh, looking at how they, they come together. There's a lot of things that just come together. And, and uh, so I work in very vast majority uh, like a, a huge what's the word for it 
I have an abundance of things that I use as my um, as my tools, as my skill set. There's lots that I offer. So I work with bodies, health, pleasure, coaching. It is something where when people come to me for sessions, what usually occurs is they start to talk a lot. People love to talk. And part of one of my capacities is apparently I have an ability to have people talk. Whether I, you know, whether I try or not, people just talk around me. And this has been my life for my whole life. So when I was in my early 20s, I remember saying this to my therapist at the time, my healing therapist. And I was like, people just come up to me and talk to me for about anything and everything. And she's like, yeah, because they know that you can facilitate them and they know that you can help them and heal them. Those were kind of the words she was using at the time. And I was like, what? I don't, I didn't really have a background in this stuff yet. I was just starting to learn healing work myself. And I was like, nah, I'm not, I'm just like, I'm just like so beginner. I don't even know um, that ironically it's true. She was, she was correct. It is something that um, because it comes naturally to me, um, I don't really think about it as one of my great skills. And then as I did start to consider it as one of my great skills and valued it more, it has now become part of my life and one of my offerings. So I do coaching as one of the things that I do in my life. And I love coaching. I love uh, seeing, you know, sometimes asking those simple questions that are just mind blowing can be so fun. I, I was just facilitating um, a, a, a client the other day and it was one of those times where you ask one question and it's such a laser pointed question that the person just has one of those bam, aha moments. And oh man, that for me is one of the most pleasurable orgasmic experiences is to see people have these aha moments in their life where their being lights up and they're just like, I'm free. I'm like, yes, you are free. And it's cute because sometimes those poignant questions can bring up stuff in ourselves that it's like, oh, who wants to know that? And uh, the who wants to know it? Sometimes it's one of those things. It's like, oh, I create trauma in my life because that's how I get attention. I'm like, sweet, you get it. That is correct. You do create trauma in your life to get attention. And then when people know it, they stop doing it sometimes, sometimes when they have other tools and they can become aware of it, they can actually stop that, that habit. Ah, it's fantastic. So that's something that I love to see in people visually and auditorially, but it is something I observe and that would be using my eyes. I love to see people have great um, shifts energetically, physically, emotionally. I love, I love seeing shifts. It is on par with like any kind of erotic film, hands down, it's, it's right up there and maybe even surpasses it. It's something so freaking gratifying for me. So I, I find doing that kind of work incredibly gratifying and mm, it's delicious actually, just thinking about it, it's kind of turning me on. So visual stimulation can come in things that you physically see, or you could be meditating and for some of you, you might call it fantasy, but for some of you, you might call it like having clairvoyance or a vision or a memory, all different ways. And we have, you know, we have things that we, uh, we're looking at right now in front of us. And then we have these memories that we sometimes bring up and we can see a person, we can see their face, we can, you know, all these things. These are all included in visual stimulation, by the way. So we're not just talking about the things that you're looking at right now. We're talking about all the range of this. So one of the really cool things I learned this week on the eyes about the 80% of the light that we perceive is coming through our eyes. Now, why does that even matter to this show? So 80% of the light coming through our eyes is the light, which is like reflecting off of things is how we see stuff. So if 80% of it's coming through our eyes and the light that's coming through our eyes is generally perceived as a white light. Now, the other cool thing that I learned was that when we have traumas in our life, the white light 
or an experience or a situation that is unsettling for us, slash a trauma, the energy that's coming through our eyes, the light that's coming through our eyes gets distorted. Unconsciously, we distort it and we don't see it as a full spectrum white light. We actually break it apart and sometimes are missing a color. We might be missing, say, magenta or something. So we'll, we will unconsciously just disregard things. And in that disregard, we actually disregard all things in that color spectrum. It's crazy and so cool. So one of the so cool things, and this excites me too, <laughs> I, I love information. Um, one of the very cool things about that is that we can start to heal using our eyes as well and using light and things that can be absorbed through the eyes. So for people who have had traumas and visual stimulation that has traumatized, they witnessed somebody being violated, um, there would be a certain possible color that is actually now lacking in your cells. Mm. And there are ways to know about that. And if you wanna know how I know that, you can contact me. You can actually find me through my website and message me. So melitzajelenik.com. You're like, how do you know that? What color am I missing? I do this. This is the kind of work I do and I can find that for you and we can talk about it. So, and possibly change it, who knows? So, the very fun thing is when you get that, it's like, okay, so everything I'm watching, this visual stimulation, some of this stuff can be traumatizing. Some of it can be appealing. You start to get how much what you're watching um, can affect not, your, not only your mind and your, how your mind is uh, interpreting the information and holding on to it as a trauma or not a trauma, that in effect will affect your entire body. For those of you who don't know, when you're when you uh, when you have experienced a trauma, you basically your body goes into this fight, flight, freeze mode. And sometimes what happens is you just freeze, or you're in flight constantly, or you're in fight constantly. Your your body is not in a calm state, and it it uh, has a really hard time being able to be in a calm state. So this can all occur from things that we've seen. So if you, you know, as a child, maybe witnessed your, your parents fighting, they, that impact could still be with you and it could actually still be affecting you and it could be affecting the way you have pleasure. So if you have, if you're like, oh, I don't really have a lot of pleasure. One of the things to look at is when did that stop in your life? Have you ever had pleasure? So for some people in this embodiment, they have not had maybe pleasure since the day of conception. Even then it might not have been pleasurable. Now there's a thought. It's not easy to, to continue to be on this planet when you have never conceived or received or had pleasure. When your whole life has been trauma drama and all of it has been incredibly stressful, your body will go into so many different um, con contractions and contortions just to survive. So let's think of our eyes as one of the methods to heal. And actually our eyes do interesting and fun other things too. Uh, that just brings up another thought where, uh, and I think I've told this story on here before, where when I used to work at a holistic metaphysical bookstore in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, uh, somebody came in looking for a book on doing different kinds of things with your eyes, like how to uh, seduce people with your eyes, how to fight people with your eyes, how to do all this stuff. And I didn't think about it because I tend to look people in the face uh, and I tend to look people in the eyes for the most part. Um, and it was interesting. I did that. And the next to this person who was asking for the book, and I said, we, and I looked it up and I said, we don't have a book like that on hand right now, but I can send it to our specialist who does like all this research and see if they can find a book for you. The person got mad at me, stormed off, wrote a letter to my boss that was 10 pages long, informing my boss that I raped him with my eyes. My boss, who had a great sense of humor, said, why haven't you done that to me? So there you go. <laughs> so, it's like, well, darn it, you never asked. So it's consensual rape. I'm only about consent. And it's, it's a very uh, funny thing, but even that, being accused of um, violating somebody with my eyes, I was 
I was actually more fascinated by it. I was like, I wonder if I have a capacity to do that. I wonder if I, I can actually penetrate people with my eyes. So to the extent that they, they feel like I've like gone into their space or something. So it's made me become more aware of how intense I sometimes look at people, um, how that may affect them. Uh, because if I'm, I don't really want to traumatize, not really my target in life is to traumatize people. In fact, it's quite the opposite. <laughs> so that was a great awareness. And so I actually was quite great, grateful to him in a lot of ways. And um, it was like, wow, you actually see me as incredibly potent. I'm quite grateful. So we are going to talk about different things with eyes and visual stimulation and how it can turn you on. I just want to give you a little breakdown of like how our eyes work and in this next segment, we're going to talk about things that people find particularly sexy that you might not have thought about. So stick around. You're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email, info at melitzayelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet, sweet pleasure seekers. Tonight we are talking about visual stimulation and how it can actually increase our sexual desire um, and a whole bunch of other, other fun things that I want to talk about. So some of the other fun things that I am going to talk about in this segment is all about visual, actual visual stimulation. So the first little segment, if you missed that, has more to do with how and why our eyes get affected, how that affects our body, what it does to us. Now, I didn't give you that whole like neurological, uh, how that, you know, how your eyes and your neurological system are connected and the, through the brain and all this other stuff. I didn't, I didn't like get into the anatomy of it, although I find anatomy incredibly sexy. It could be a very long conversation about how eyes actually do their thing. So we're going to just move past that physiological anatomy stuff for tonight. And for those of you who are turned on by anatomy and might like to talk to me about anatomy, cool. Uh, just connect with me through my website, melitzajelenik.com. And I'm happy to uh, get sexy chat about anatomy with you. One of the very first sexy words I ever said to a boy when I was a teenager was, you got sexy patellas. He was like, what? I'm like, that's, that's the scientific name for your kneecap. Because I love my grandpa's medical textbooks and would like try and learn as much about anatomy and physiology as I could. And so I thought this is one of the funniest words to use because nobody my age knows what it is. 
And I can just go around telling people they got really sexy patellas and they won't even know what the fuck I'm talking about. So, and they didn't, and it was curiosity and it created conversation. I'll tell you that much. So for those of you in the dating world, if you don't really know what to say to somebody, just walk up and go, I've noticed you have some sexy patellas. You might get a slap in the face, especially if the person doesn't know what a patella is, might start a conversation and they might be like, thank you. I know exactly what my patellas are. Woohoo. So good times, good times had by all. One of the things that we know is that things visual affect people's arousal. We know this and we know it and the industry knows it. So they create things that are visually stimulating like pornography, like back in the day, I don't even know if these still exist, but like magazines like Hustler and Penthouse. And now you got a, a million different kinds of porn sites and pictures and People are turned on by taking their own picture and looking at it and sending it to you and thinking that you need to respond to that. And yeah, cool. If you're turned on by pictures, awesome. If you're turned on by visuals, awesome. That's great. And some things can be really specific. Like some people are turned on by certain shapes and certain curves. And they can. some people can be equally disturbed by those to a point of phobia. So there, there can be a fine line and that's where usually that tr trauma kind of has kicked in that can, can um, create those, those feelings that may result in a phobia. But we're gonna talk about the pleasure of it right now. So let's look at some shapes and curves. Now, for the most part, women have been regarded as being really sexy if they have an hourglass figure. Now, that's a lot of curvature going on, right? It was curvy. And there are certain, those curve shapes are tend, tended to be found as something that's quite erotic and pleasing to the eye. So whether it's, you know, a woman's body having beautiful curves or a man's body having uh, certain shapes, and if you're in the chat room, you're going to see some fabulous curves um, that have just been put up in the chat room to look at. So thanks for the visual stimulation, it's beautiful. And there is something stunning when you look at the different, even when you, you break it down and you look at a certain area of a person's body, um, it can be highly erotic to even stare at like the nape of their neck. If you're really willing and open to receive the person in their entirety, then using your sense of sight. And I include in this people who have been regarded as um, blind in any way or have any kind of visual impairment, uh, that your eyes will still have a capacity to see in your own way, right? So it's not that it's for, this is not just for the vis so-called visually impaired, you know, uh, uh, for some people who have the ability to see shapes or shadows, that can be incredibly sexy too. I'm really getting some of the greatest visuals in, in the chat room tonight and I'm loving it. Um, yes, the shape of the V, I'll call it the V from a man's uh, hips down to the pubic bone is one of the, I find sexiest shapes going. That V shape is so hot. Um, I also love the shape of great calves. I have a weird, and um, I have a weird thing for calves, especially superly, incredibly molded calves that are like round and they're just like delicious. And I don't care if you're a man or a woman, I will admire your calves and be delighted by them. So I love, love, love them. Oh. I'm being reminded by my friend who's producing me tonight that I took a really great calf image of her, of her legs. I did because I love calves and she has beautiful calves. <laughs> so, I got to get out of that headspace right now because it's kind of a turn on and then I'll get distracted and won't be able to do the show. So even though I don't get to look at it physically right now, it is a like a memory, right? And 
like I was saying before, it's not even always something that you're looking at physically in the moment. It's those memories. You, you might even think back and you're like, oh, like the person's breasts, like the shape of them were just phenomenal. Or like, wow, the shape of that penis was like so amazing. There are shapes and there are shadows. There are colors that are just, they're just beautiful. And we can even see things like textures, right? Uh, we feel textures, but we can see textures as well. And <laughs> the, this, I'm not sure what the spank bank is, but um, there's a reference in the chat room about a spank bank, which I'm gonna need to look up after. Um, I believe it's the V shape. I'm not sure what we're talking about, but <laughs> I, yes, okay. Cheers to the spank bank too. The, um, maybe the spank bank is the breast, the butt, all of that is what people spank off to. Cool. I love also different shapes, even when I look at things. So I'm a big collector of minerals and crystals too. And I find that I collect them more than anything for their visual appeal. If they look stunning and beautiful to me, they're probably coming home with me. If you know certain colors come out and certain shapes and tech and the textures that I can visually see and feel. Um, I say visually feel because I, I it, there is like a visual feel to it. So yeah, there's there's beauty in it, right? And how many of us choose to surround ourselves with things that are visually beautiful? So if you're feeling like your space or your home is in a bit of a funk, um, my husband calls it junky. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to put that there. It looks junky. I'm like, okay, <laughs> that's, that's his word. I don't, I don't know. I think it's because he was born in the 60s and he uses these words like junky. So Sometimes things just look junky and they're not a turn on. And yes, I, I am I am now choosing that the word junky is from the 60s because other people from the 60s also use the word junky. So there you go. That's just what I'm going to say about that. <laughs> so, so we have um, things that are visually appealing. Usually your body and mind will feel at rest when things are visually appealing and stimulated in a way that's like a turn on. So you could even have a home. I bet you've looked at houses online or anything to do with architecture, or maybe you haven't, but I find architecture incredibly sexy too. And there are shapes and lines. And I have a friend um, who lives in Toronto and he's an amazing photographer. And I love looking at his pictures of architecture and all the like funny things he finds, like he's got great funny, um, like you find signs that are just funny. I don't know if I have permission to share his info on Instagram uh, from his Instagram, but if I do, next time I'll share it with you, I'll find out. He'll be listening to the show. So if he says I can share his Instagram so you guys can see beautiful visuals on there, I will let you know. So uh, the different things that I think when I look at that my body gets turned on by are um, things that just make my body happy, flowers, trees. I love seeing mountains. Uh, my friend, my friend and I, my friend is producing it tonight and I went on a crazy road trip to Utah and we both were like orgasmically in love with the mountains and we're like, oh, almost in tears. We're like, oh my God, look how beautiful they are. And like that, that kind of stuff is like so visually appealing we almost like pulled to the side of the road just to like have a moment to ourselves to just like, you know, feel good about it all. I don't think we were gonna like actually stop to, to masturbate on the side of the road, but we uh, definitely there was gonna be, there's picture taking involved, I know that. So, <laughs> though it was very erotic in my eyes. So thanks for that, it was a very erotic moment in my life. <laughs> Lots of things can be visually appealing. And we know this too, because we have things like Instagram and we have um, you know, some, some of the other social media that are really geared towards visuals like TikTok. And why? Because people love visual stimulation. We love it. And sometimes we can get overstimulated. Like our minds are, are just like, I've had so much. It's like as if you've masturbated your clitoris or your penis for like, 10 hours straight and it's just like an intense almost like overstimulation 
So our minds can get that overstimulation of constant stimulation. So uh, sometimes it's fun to take a little like break from visual stimulation and wear like a blindfold then to go back and be able to open your eyes and see things again. It's like a, it's a, it's kind of a, a new experience, right? So if you've ever been blindfolded and then the person reveals something to you, just even, even the reveal of going from not seeing something to seeing something can be quite a turn on as well. So there's so many different ways that we use our eyes to be turned on and half the time we're probably not even aware of it. So we're going to talk more about visual stimulation and how to use it to increase desire in the next segment. And we're going to use it in the next segment to talk about how we can use it in our partnerships uh, for more pleasure with our lovers. So that's coming up next in the next segment. You're listening to the Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. You'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life, and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Interested in masturbating for money, copulating for consciousness, and pleasuring on purpose? 21 Days of Sexual Magicism with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich is an exploration of tools, processes, and actions that you can use to create more for your life, your body, your money inflows, and so much more. Graduated learning for all levels of interest. Learn at your own pace via video classes or join the yearly live class. Take a peek at www.melitzayelenich.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows, along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email, info at melitzayelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Ooh, welcome back, my sweet pleasure seekers. So tonight we're talking about visual stimulation and how it can be used to have greater desire and greater fun times in the bedroom. So just before break, I was mentioning that if you've ever had your body, your eyes be blindfolded and then your blindfold's been taken off, that that can be quite a turn on. So that was a little bit of a foray into how we can play with visual stimulation with our lovers. Another one of the ways that I would suggest, and I've suggested many times on this show, is the little show and tell. And what does show and tell do or mean? Is you can show your partner for fun. You could, a few things, you could do a strip tease. That would be visual stimulation for your lover. So in that, you know, you can get your body in the groove and move. And if you feel a little awkward at first, even more fun. 
my husband finds my stripping hilarious because it is hilarious and I do it in the most hilarious way. So his, he actually gets turned on by laughing at me. I think he must, or he would have left a long time ago. So I, I love to uh, make him bust a gut laughing and cracks me up, cracks him up. Is that you don't, to be a sensual movement artist does not mean that you have to be serious. It means that you are doing things that are, are a contribution to your body, right? So if your body is feeling happy, that would be sensual. I know because I've had people ask, what is a sensual body movement artist? And I'm like, that is where you're willing to move and be and choose for your body anything that has your body feel happy. That's as simple as it gets. And if that means that you're on a stripper's pole, or if that means you're biking, that can all be part of it. So st stripping is a great way to uh, have a visual stimulation for your lover. Masturbating in front of your partner. Not only is it a great tool for visual stimulation, it's also a great tool for education. It is a great way to show your lover how you get turned on. So I know I've talked to people, I've talked to many couples who've never done this in front of their lovers before. So if this is something that you feel very uncomfortable with, the first step would be visual stimulation with self. Get out a mirror and masturbate in front of a mirror and allow yourself to be turned on by the visual stimulation of your own body because it can be sexy if you let it be, if you don't judge you, and if you don't judge what's going on and you stay in the moment and you stay with yourself and you just enjoy it. It can be highly, highly erotic. So, and if you don't have a um, mirror that, you know, that's small enough to hold, some people like using cameras or cell phones or whatever. I'm not a fan of technology because you know, even when you think you've erased it, it's in the ethers. That's not my thing, but if it's your thing, cool. Um, that's another way you can use visual stimulation is creating videos and pics for each other. Again, not my personal preference, but this is, this is all about what works for you. So we we'll look at how many other ways can couples share visual stimulation. Another one would be to, to do things like you know, showing your lover your favorite porn if you want it. You could make your own porn and show it to each other, you know, watch it together. Uh, visual stimulation can come in so many different ways. You, you could actually create a piece of art with your bodies and then look at that and have that in your room as a, as a visual reminder of something erotic, of like a body painting. And body painting can be used too as a, as a visual aid. So you could paint each other and then look at that, look at the artwork you've done on each other's bodies. There can be a lot of fun and play with this. Mostly what I invite you to is to actually have fun with this, to not make it serious. And you can also, in any way, you can share all things that turn you on with your lovers. So if that's like, if you get turned on by eating, if you're really turned on by something and you're doing that in front of somebody, they will be probably reacting to that and turned on by it, right? So if you show your lover how to use things like, you know, if you're like, this is how I like to use my sex toys, that's another way to do it. You can send them videos if you want. You could you know, when you look at the, the scope of, of pornography and what's available in pornography, you could take any topic from pornography and reenact it. So visual stimulations can also include things like wearing costumes so that the thing that you're seeing on your partner is like a change of character. So all of these, and then, you know, there's other things that go along with the character. Sometimes it's like being in character, having a different accent, having a, a storyline that goes with it. So these visual aids often contribute to and add to the whole scenario of things that you're looking at. So, you know, get out a costume. It could even be simple. It could be something as simple as a cowboy hat. 
It could be something more, so it could be something as simple as wearing high heels and nothing else. That's like a costume and that's a visual stimulation. There's, there is a huge number of people who are highly turned on by looking at feet too. So, you know, sharing pictures of, and it doesn't always have to be your genitals. It's those parts of the body whose shapes and curves and looks turn your partner on. And also one of, one of the things is like wearing those high heels, that visual stimulation of looking at it can also be the shape of the heels, it can be the smell of them. It can be a lot of different things, but we'll start with the look, right? The look can be incredibly erotic. Just when you look at a lot of women's high heels, they have a curve to them at the back and at the front and on the bottom. They're, they're very much curved like um, like where the heel is, they're curved almost like a, a shape of a bum. And then they have like these little under them. Probably if we took a bunch of high heels and tore them apart and put them in different ways, we'd probably create something very similar to the shape of human bodies, I would think. Because a lot of things that we do like are shaped either like things in nature that we like, or they're shaped very much similarly to a human body like my favorite one of my favorite mugs is uh it's very round and i can hold it and it reminds me of my boob and i like the shape of it and then there's another one that has it's more like slender and it reminds me of a waist and i like the shape of that too so if you are somebody who loves looking at things and loves visual stimulation you're probably going to find there are different shapes that that you like more than others and some people like the visual stimulation of like spreading so spreading your legs wide open spreading your butt wide open spreading your breasts apart you know there's this openness and some people are very turned on by the image of things very open and some people are turned on by the things that are very tight and closed so there are many different descriptors that are used by people who have a sort of fetish for all things visual or some things visual because the fetish can be very specific to something like legs spread open, right? So it's, um, it's lovely when you know that about you and part of how you find that out about yourself is a lot of the times when you're like masturbating, you'll find that that's your go-to. You're like, ah, oh, I've got like five minutes. My go-to is in this visual simulation will will pop into your mind if you're somebody who has an inability to visualize, you'll have the visual pop up into your mind and that can assist with, uh, with, with actually having a climax. So for those of you who don't easily um, see things or visualize things in your mind, then you might actually need the physical stimulation so that you can, the, like the physical thing that you look at rather than the memory of what you're thinking about. So, I bet there are quite a few things in your life when you look back that when you've seen them, they've turned you on. You know, I bet there are young boys out there who have found nudie magazines, you know, when they're like 12, 13 years old, girls too. Um, I'm going to include all genders. And for those of you who listened to last week's show, you'll know that there are many genders. So we're just going to say all genders. You may have found some visual stimulation in your life that has turned you on. And that might have been the first thing that you can remember, but I bet you there's been things that even before that turned you on uh, shape-wise. I, I know that when I was little, I loved the shape of muffins. <laughs> That's weird. I'm a weirdo. Um, I also love the shape of cakes because my mom was a baker and we had a bakery and I, I loved looking at her cakes. And, uh, and there, so they're different things and we, we kind of sometimes forget about how much these things can be such a turn on. So let's value all of them. Let's value all the things that when we look at them, our bodies get happy. And let's receive more of that because it's quite fun that we can have, you know, we can have so many different things and so many different memories. And, you know, if you're feeling down, you're feeling out, just tapping into some of those memories of visuals can start to unlock some of that stuff that's maybe been a trauma in your body that you've been refusing to see or that you've been, you know, haven't been feeling too much pleasure. So maybe 
I think now's a really good time to watch something that your body likes to see. And if that's in your memories too, that's cool. If it's a show, awesome. If, you know, if it's going out there looking at nature, if it's looking at architecture or the shape of watermelons, like it can be anything. I think my dad is like visually stimulated by watermelons because he brings them like everywhere he goes, even in the winter, he delivers watermelons. He's that kind of dude, loves them. He raised watermelons, raised them like they were babies. Now, he grew watermelons when he was a kid and uh, he loves shapes of watermelons. He'll talk about it. And I think it's because, you know, they look, they can look kind of like breasts and he has a breast fetish for sure. So sometimes things will look like you know they can look kind of phallic or they can look um i'm going to invent this word i think vulvic i'm not sure it's like if phallus is, goes phallic then would the shape of a vulva be vulvic maybe anyway shape of a vulva shape of breasts breastic i don't know i don't know what that word would be but anyway lots of different fun uh, shapes that we are definitely turned on by. They give us reminders, visual reminders of things like nurturing and like things like breast shapes can definitely evoke the sense of nurturing and the, you know, visual representations of things that are, are open and spread wide open can feel like, ah, that's so open and inviting. And that can be so, so erotic too. So Ah, oh, just think about that. I'd like for this, during this next break, just take a moment to kind of reflect on some of the images that over your life have really invited a lot of joy and, and a lot of um, orgasmic energy into your body and just be with that for the next few minutes. You can listen to the commercials too and, and enjoy those images and see how your body feels about remembering those. So you're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices and we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. You'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life, and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email, info at MelitzaYelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet, sweet pleasure seekers. So for those of you who are like, oh, okay, so yeah, I got some things to play with now. I'm going to like go have some play with my partner. I'm going to go show them my masturbation fun times. I'm going to go do a little strip tease and we're going to make a little video. Um, get creative. Just start playing. What's great about visualization and being, and maybe even it's about having other people, the visual, visual, stimulate, uh, visual stimulation can also be people watching you, very much voyeuristic exhibitionist. So maybe um, you have a great desire for being seen and being observed having pleasure that would also be visual stimulation for greater erotic pleasure so it just doesn't have to be your eyes what if it's eyes on you as well and and just check that energy for you like how comfortable are you having people see you and how comfortable are you being seen and like, how comfortable are you watching somebody else have pleasure? Are you okay with it? Do you celebrate other people's pleasure? And like, yeah, have pleasure, yay, cool. So some people are very, very uncomfortable watching other people have pleasure. In fact, they don't even like people having the smallest pleasure. Like, you know, somebody might do really well in their business and they're like, they can't even see it. They don't wanna see it. It bothers them to see 
somebody's um, pleasure rising in their life. It doesn't even include the sex part. So are you, are you a person who loves seeing other people have pleasure or voyeuristic in any way that you like seeing people even have pain? You may be a little, uh, a little bit of a voyeur slash a little bit of a sadist at the same time. You might like watching people have pain. So, you know, what is, what turns you on? You know, when you look at something, is it the shape? Is it the color? Is it the, the action that you're watching? Is it the, because sometimes the action can be something as simple as somebody eating. And there's a lot of porn out of Asia that is all mostly Japanese porn that is women eating food because it's found as highly erotic to see this. So yeah, what do you like to see? What, what turns you on? I know that looking back in my life, there's been a lot of things that have visually turned me on. I think when I was in grade four, the boy that I really had a crush on um, and my teacher, she was beautiful too. It was their looks. I just liked how they looked and I liked their brains a lot too. You can't really see a person's brains, but you know, <laughs> you, you can get a sense of them, I suppose. But there was a look and my teacher wore these fabulous high heels all the time. And she wore this beautiful, she was always wearing the most beautiful clothes. She, I just loved being in class and looking at her. And I think that was, that's interesting because when I went to go do supply teaching, I never dressed that way. I never dressed like she did. Um, though looking back, that was maybe silly. Maybe if I'd actually dressed in a way that the kids were um, excited to look at me, it would have been an easier job. I don't know. <laughs> so we always listened to her and we always admired her. I don't ever remember anybody misbehaving in her class because we were all just like, oh, Miss Finley, you're awesome. We love you. <laughs> so she was great. And yeah, the boy in that grade, he was just the cutest. So it can be looks too. It can be as simple as looks. And a lot of people are number one, numero uno, we find things like Tinder um, really fun because you can see a person and flicky flick, you're in or you're out, right? Swipe left, swipe right. I don't even know what those swipes mean, frankly, because I've, I've personally never been on Tinder. I only ever saw somebody be on Tinder once. And I was like, wow, this is like the most judgmental game I've ever seen because it's all based on looks. And then the reality is we are turned on by things we see. It's a visual simulation. It's how our bodies operate. We, our bodies operate by all kinds of stimulation from all of our senses. So our eyes are one of them and definitely seeing people can contribute to whether you're attracted to them or not. So probably even, uh, you know, we think about it even when we get really small, small children, things that we like looking at are certain colors. You, you can hand babies certain colors and, you know, they, you know, uh, large quantity of babies will be attracted to one color more than the other, um, not based on sex or anything like that. It's just based on colors that we can see and perceive first. So we're stimulated by them first. So surround, speaking of colors, if your home does not have colors that are turning you on, one of the fastest things you can do to have your home feel a little bit more sexy and a little more erotic is just go paint those walls, if you know how or otherwise hire somebody to paint those walls, but you can add things like fabrics and things to get some extra sensory stuff going on around that you can visually see or paintings or anything that will help you feel like the things you're looking at make you really happy. You could have nude photos of yourself in your bedroom or paintings or anything, right? There's so many choices for being turned on visually. Like even as I'm sitting here, I'm looking around my office at so many things that are visually stimulating. And some people get very frustrated by that much visual stimulation. So some people like um, minimalism so that they don't see a lot and that visual is a turn on too. And some people like a lot of stuff. Um, so yeah, you just gotta know what works for you. I wanna thank you guys for listening to The Pleasure Zone this week. Thank you for listening to The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist, Milica Yelenich. 
The Pleasure Zone returns next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by choosing to be turned on and tuned in to your body.